The CEO of Text and Property Fund, Nurse Pua Balfour, joins me in studio now. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News. Before we get into the nitty-gritty of Text and Property Fund, take us through how you became CEO of a JSC listed company with a market cap of about 2.8 billion rand in your early 30s. Hi, Nzinga. Thank you very much. Um, I guess the journey for, well, my property journey in the sector has taken about uh, 16 years or so. Um, I started off in various uh, uh, spheres of property, um, property finance specifically, um, and property development. And I was uh, on the investing property team for probably about eight years or so prior to my joining Texton as a non-executive independent director. So I guess when the opportunity arose for uh, the board at that time who were looking to appoint a CEO, um, I, of course, had placed my hand up for the position and was appointed in July of last year. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't been an easy journey for Texton. It's been a very tumultuous uh, time there. Uh, even when you were appointed, people were asking, you know, will the ship steady? So take us through some of those issues and what you've seen since, you draw, since July last year. Sure. I mean, I, I think most shareholders are aware of the fact that um, previously there's been a few CEOs prior to my appointment. And I guess for myself and um, my CFO, Inga Peck, it's really been around stabilizing the ship with respect to, you know, management perspective. And that was sort of completed towards the end of last year with the Manco internalization transaction, where we insourced the management team within the business. This was really in line with um, industry practice and also global, you know, um, governance as well. So with our appointment, I, th I guess on a board perspective, it's really remained the same strong and robust board, but it's really the front line that had changed and which is now somewhat steadied with our appointment. Mm -hmm. Talk us through this acquisition you made of about 200 million rand worth of properties. So we acquired um, around four industrial properties and that was in um, the Cape Town Airport Industrial Precinct and another on the outlying outskirts of Milnerton or so, which is really one of the more up and coming and growing industrial nodes. Um, and I think many investors would know that the industrial sector is more um, prized because of the fact that there are strong covenants in place with the growth of distribution centers on the back of course, you know, online retailers which are growing in presence globally and in South Africa as well. So we believe it's a transaction that um, will hold us quite steady going forward in terms of a strong underpin of income growth uh, coming through with strong tenants that we have in, in those properties. Mm -hmm. And going forward, what are those the kind of acquisitions that you're focusing on more? Yes. So we've always been a diversified property fund. So um, more so, I think, focused on an office sector, which is we've had about 50% exposure to. And going forward now, um, we're likely to increase our retail. So in the likes of, you know, acquiring shopping centers and together with that industrial um, assets as well. Mm. If you can look broadly at the property space, and I know this is a very uh, wishy-washy, this can be a very wishy-washy question, but we're seeing um, that there's been quite a lot of eruptions with certain property companies. Is that industry still quite a safe industry if I'm looking to invest? Do I look at property as something that's quite stable and safe? Sure. So I guess quarter one of this year did present quite a bit of volatility for investors that hold property stocks. Um, I guess what really underpins this is the actual physical assets themselves. Um, and I guess unlike other industries, um, these are assets which are quite robust, which have strong income streams underpinned by tenants, um, you know, on the retail side from the likes of Pick and Pay, you know, Woolworths and others on the industrial side, you know, you get your shop right distribution centers, etc. So I guess for investors, you've got to continue looking at property in line with, you know, property portfolios that remain robust during difficult trading conditions. Mm -hmm. Would you say that Texton, uh, with the turnaround strategy that you've implemented with a solid uh, CEO that seems to be staying there now for the long term, uh, is turned around completely or you still have a way to go and, and what obstacle perhaps are in your path there? Well, I think for anyone in the property industry at the moment, it's still going to be, you know, quite a few headwinds that we all face. Um, we're dealing with quite a dampened economic outlook, you know, with respect to South Africa as a whole. So trading in that environment makes it difficult. Um, so I guess it's going to be about smart and innovative management teams in being able to sustain, you know, strong tenants in their buildings. Um, we've started, we're already only the beginning of our turnaround strategy. Uh, we've done our first six months to December of last year and the remaining six months will come now to our full year end for June 2018. And we are seeing 
somewhat green shoots coming back um, with respect to you know some of our office tenants uh, where we are doing quite remarkably well and we maintained 98% of occupancies and sort of the sand to node where you'll see massive developments coming on stream and oversupply of office properties. Um, and so for us it's really around stabilizing the ship so far and continuing to implement the new strategy that we have um, put in place and which we also will be happy to share with shareholders, I guess, for um, our next financial year end. Ms. Pua Balfour, well, thanks so much for your time on SABC News. It's time for a short break. I'll have a look at your international business news when we come back.